victory. Let me get you some um, highlights. In my opinion, too okay, premature right to stop, the, okay. stop okay. the match. I think it was premature, too. I didn't too. see a whole lot of uh, punches landed by Dog Bay in that sequence. Okay. Okay. What y'all think? He wasn't like... big left hand that got... Alvalo's attention right there from Isaac yeah. Dog Bay, and then the right, right overhand, right, right. There. I guess the ref saw those two big punches and said, "You know what? I'm gonna save you from yourself, son. I'm gonna stop this action." Hey, let's uh, mute it right there. Isaac Dog Bay, former WBO 122 pound champion, before he met Emmanuel Navarrete twice, and he got a boot put in his ass. No disrespect to seeing how it is is now competing at 126 pounds and now that Shakur Stevenson has moved up and vacated his title well the crazy thing is here's the thing Navarrete has moved to 126 now so from my understanding Mick Conlon and Jesse Magdaleno no way it's going to be it's it's it isn't it supposed to be Emmanuel Navarrete versus Mick Conlon for the WBO title. That's what's going to be ordered, or is it going to be Magdaleno? Either way, it looks like Isaac Dogbay is going to have to run into Navarrete again if he wants to get a shot. Now, there's a reason why I'm not mentioning guys like Gary Russell and Leo Santa Cruz because I just don't see them type of fights happening. In regards to Josh Warrington, he's still there. You know, I was really looking forward to hopefully him and Shakur Stevenson fighting, but Shakur Stevenson is up at 130 right now. You know, he's officially vacated his title, even though Fight News hasn't um, updated yet on their um, website. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Isaac Dogbay, the five foot four, 126 pounder. Now, you know, I just don't know how I feel about him at 126. You know, and definitely not any, you know, higher than that. There were some talks or rumors at one point in time, wasn't it, that him and Carl Frampton was, you know, on a collision course to fight? I wonder if we're going to get an um, interview from Dog Bay. If you don't know, I was pretty pissed off at his trainer father for not stopping the fight early when he fought um, Emmanuel Navarrete. And just so happens, he's no longer being trained by his father. Seems to be no bad blood, but he's now with um, um, Barry Hunter. Maryland, D.C., Baltimore trainer. Hey, let's listen in. Please subscribe. Round number eight. I always get Barry Hunter and Kevin Cunningham by confused. technical knockout, Isaac Royal Star Dumpy. Former WBO junior featherweight world champion. Good job. Good gets job. a comeback win tonight. We will hear from him and ask all about life with new trainer Barry Hunter when no. he returns. Stay with us. Oh, shit. No. Who said oh, shit? Anyway, so, yeah, you know, going back to the guys that we were talking about. By the way, here's Dog, but he is now 21 and 2 with 15 K. 25-year-old from Ghana. This is his first fight back in 14 months since he lost Emmanuel Navarrete. He first really, really, really jumped on the scene when he fought out Jesse Magdaleno um, here in Philly. I was sick during this fight. I didn't go. I was like in a fucking coma and shit. And now, you know, he's back competing at 126 pounds. Now... We don't know what the way the boxing landscape is right now. We don't know. Like, it's hard to really, like, follow storylines of who could possibly be next. You know, I would welcome a Dog Bay versus a Miguel Mariaga. You know, I don't know if they would do him versus Jesse Magdaleno again. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it would be somebody like, you know, Rob Ruben Villa, Ryan Walsh. Or, you know, Chris Diaz. Also a top ring fighter that can be made. You know, there's some options for dog bait. And I can say that he, he does look like he has improved. You know, he's not. He doesn't seem as, as erratic. And by the way, it was against uh, Chris Avalos. This is the fourth fight I covered of Chris Avalos. 
I covered when he fought Carl Frampton. That was a big fight. Didn't that happen over in Ireland? Yep, it did. I covered that fight. I covered his fight when he fought Oscar Valdez. He fought Miguel Flores. Ew, no good flopper. And uh, I covered his fight when he fought Leo Santa Cruz. And so this is his fourth appearance on the channel. And of course, unfortunately for him, he's lost all of those fights. If you haven't heard, Top Rank is now moving to the traditional boxing format of, you know, one f one or two, you know, shows a month, not every week or not twice a week like they've been doing because the ratings have just been like just ugh. now i appreciate what top ring has been doing in regards to you know like the protocols and showing us like okay well look this is not easy to do basically the 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 logistics of things so i wonder what the hell is taking them to come goddamn back from fucking commercial break i'm sitting here rambling and shit i haven't done a video in god knows how long but we are back. We're getting back into the swing of things, even though I am exhausted. There's been a lot going on. I can't wait to actually do a stream, to be honest with you. Laxative gummies. Hmm. So anyway, let's shoot a fat for a little bit. Here go the rest of the card. Oscar Valdez versus Jason Velez is the main event. This is actually the best card they've put on top to bottom. Look at Bernardo. What are you doing, Bernardo? Huh? Fooling around in the bubble. Stop fooling around, Bernardo. Get it together, man. Hey, let's see what the uh what they're talking about. Always clowning around, Bernardo. Hey, I want to speak on behalf of not just everyone on our crew here at ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut, but on behalf of all boxing fans. And for those who cherish the sport. And say thank you to these folks, the women and men who have sacrificed the last 47 days to bring us live televised Yeah, fights. thank you. Our director, Aladdin Freeman, who's been an unbelievable leader. Our associate director, Mike Mascaro, so many more in the truck. And the fearless leadership from operations of Lynn West. 13 straight milestone the boxing markers essential of workers. COVID testing. And that's among a staff of 42 from ESPN and the entire top-ranked staff. And not one single positive test. 13 for 13 of those COVID test markers in the bubble from everybody there. Nearly two months away from their families in the bubble, working while following the strict guidelines, an impressive display of commitment to the craft. Green and matcha tea. they did it. Not Powder. unlike so many of the fighters in the ring. Tea. Folks, this wasn't for the potential fame or fortune. It's just what they do and they take it seriously and they enjoy it wholly. So thank you to our entire team in Vegas, 47 days away. Salute you. We salute and you and appreciate the you. The first ESPN remote production group to return to work in the midst of the pandemic, and they're on the job, and they showed their class. And thank you for not copywriting me. Isaac Dogbay, a TKO winner, and he's with Bernardo. Here we go, finally. Isaac still throwing punches here. You landed three times as many punches as Chris Avalos, who was a tough opponent. How'd you feel after 14 months away from the ring? Nehu. You know, um, first and foremost, I give the first place to the Almighty God. Um, it's, been, it's been a tough uh, 14 months, but you know, God has been with me every step of the way. Um, I'm grateful, you know, and um, I just want to say thank you to on the praise of the Lord, you know, for this, um, for, 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 for my coming back, for my comeback. You know, and um, everyone that has been by my side, you know, guiding me through these um, 40 months. I mean, it's been um, it's been a tremendous road, but finally, you know, we're still we're coming back. We're still warming up. I felt yeah. I felt great in there today. Well, you've been working with Barry Hunter, and what improvements were you able to show this evening inside the ring? Um, you know, I had to listen. You know, um, I think I'm gonna get a gold one. I could one. hear his voice telling me, you know, uh, just take take my time. I should take my time. I should relax. I shouldn't force it. I, I know sometimes I felt, sometimes I was more or less like a little bit tense, you know. So once um, I went with the flow, everything was just flowing of the jabs and um, yeah, I felt great. Yeah. That's good. Can't wait to see you fighting for a Likewise. world title. And, um, I just want to say a big thank you to, you know, ESPN and Top Rank. I'm glad to be back on, on ESPN now. I just want to say thank you to all the people out there. Um, they've, been, they've been very, very supportive. I want to say a big shout out to you. You know, my, my, my teammates are the headbangers, you know, uh, Scooter, Max, um, 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 everybody, Harris, everybody, everyone, everyone, uh, you know, happy <laughs> birthday to my boy, Lyndon, 
you know, and uh, Mikey Williams, where is he? He's right there, <laughs> Joe, we'll send it back and to you. Thank, thank you, you to the, you know, my coaches and everyone, you know, my family. Uh, All right, Dog Bay, they had to get you out of there, bro. Come on, man, we got to keep up with the. But, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I like Isaac Dog Bay, but it's just that, you know, if he runs into Navarrete again, whew, well, Navarrete, though, is an animal. I don't know if he can beat him. I don't know. You know, he may have a better performance, but then also how will he do psychologically against um, um, Navarrete if he run into him again, you know? So maybe he should pursue, you know, get on the IBF path and try to go after Josh Warrington and let Navarrete do what he's going to do with Mick Conlon and, and, and Magdaleno or whatever over there. Anyway, I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Time to get to the next fight. We cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.